Time for the final kit build of the year. And this time it is going to be this one that I've been somewhere in the combination of looking forward to and dreading for the entire season of kit builds. So let's just get into that. After first observing the proper traditions such as the pouring of the beer, today it is roundabout English dark mild from Tark Brewing in Winnipeg. They describe it as reserved, nutty, bespoked, as opposed to bespoke, you know, wheel thing, right? And malt forward. Pairs well with windy walks and minding the gap. Which is not really a driving thing, but whatever. Most of their beers have some sort of an automotive theme going on, and this, I suppose, is no different. But enough about that. Let's see what this kit really is. Has anybody figured it out just from the picture yet? Here's some clues. Recognize those guys? Those are laser diodes, and there should be a whole bunch of them in here because this is a laser harp kit. Looking first at the circuit board, it's actually two circuit boards with little mouse bites to separate the two of them. This one has mounting holes for seven of these little LED uh, lasers, and the rest of the board is... Well, the brains of the operation, etc. We have the main chip, which is an STC microcontroller. We have a little speaker down here. And then up here, matching with the laser diodes, we have, what have they got them marked as? GM2. Those are light dependent resistors. I'm not sure why they went to GM, but whatever. So there are seven of those matching. And how this thing is intended to work, as far as I can tell, you mount the laser diodes uh, up here somewhere and there are some big standoffs to accomplish that and then they shine down and aim at each of these light dependent resistors and as you wave your hand or finger or any other pokey bit underneath there you'll block the various lasers and the light dependent resistors will go dark which will cause things to happen in the software of the microcontroller and will cause different noises to be made. I don't know how musical the noises are. I'm expecting them to be square wave based because that's just what uh, microcontrollers tend to put out. Although they might be doing some sort of PWM sound synthesis. I don't know. We shall find out. The inevitable parts list doesn't actually have a lot of different components. It's just a lot of repeated components. Um, 11 resistors of whatever value, 10K, I guess. Some capacitors, Y1, a crystal is what Y typically is. Do I have a crystal in this mess here? Oh yeah, there it is, 12 meg crystal, so that will be clocking the microcontroller. You know what, instead of just looking through the parts list, let's just go all the way to the actual schematic and we can see what's going on. So in the middle we have the microcontroller as expected. We have a bunch of diodes there. I'm not sure if those are... No, those aren't the laser diodes. Those are just regular diodes. So they are probably out... Well, they're going to be outputs from here. So I'm assuming as you block the light to the variable resistors, the, um, the microcontroller will turn those on to show that it's registered a note. We have the actual variable uh, light-dependent resistors here, just shown as potentiometers, but actually the LDRs. Um, with a pull-up resistor in series, so there's a voltage divider there. So these will, I'm assuming, be analog inputs to the microcontroller. But they might, they could easily be digital, actually, because, yeah, this will just, uh, you know, be pulled up or pulled down, depending on, yeah. I guess it won't really matter, and we won't be able to tell unless we go and look at the uh, data sheet for this microcontroller, which I may or may not do. Regardless, those are the inputs. They go in there. Then we have a speaker output. Um, we have the crystal. There are the laser diodes down there. They just go straight to voltage. And up here we have DC coming in on a barrel jack, um, a power switch, filtering capacitor, a couple of push buttons that go to K1 and K2, so that will be likely selecting modes, different octaves, different pitches, something. Speaker output through a uh, base resistor just to limit current through the transistor, and then a, a PNP transistor, 
uh, driving the speaker, which as opposed to last week's kit is an actual speaker. Okay. Other than that, we have a power cable. So this is clearly powered from five volts, a bit of heat shrink. Not quite sure what that's for. Maybe for creating a little tunnel onto there, a light shroud, or maybe actually for creating a light shroud onto the LDRs. That heat shrink did get me curious, so I decided to take a quick peek at the uh, listing on eBay. And it does look like the heat shrink is just designed to shrink around the LDRs to create a little shroud, which will keep stray light out, but the laser diodes will zoom right in. Okay, let's get busy with the board into the holder. Um, I think I'm going to start with the, the usual components, the ones that are both lowest profile and least likely to be damaged by subsequent monkeying about. And that is almost always going to be resistors and ceramic capacitors, followed by maybe push buttons, and well, we'll see what happens after that. But yeah, resistors first. And it looks like there is just a bunch of 1K and a bunch of 10K resistors. And of course, since they're not labeled, well, I mean, they are with color code, but my colorblind eyes can't deal with that. So those are, looks like 1K, which means these ones will be the 10K. So we'll start off with the 1K for no particular reason other than that they're the ones I picked up first. And as I've done previously, I'm just cutting them off the tape. I don't need all that lead length anyway. And that means I'm not dragging the uh, tape goop through the holes in the board when I'm soldering it. Not that that matters normally, but occasionally you'll run into a situation where it, where it does, if the holes are smaller or whatnot. But in this case, as I said, I don't think it matters. So I'll just drop all these 1Ks in and get them soldered in. As we saw before on the schematic, the 1Ks are mostly current limiting for LEDs and where there's one other one, which is the current limiting for the base current on the transistor that drives the speaker. And then repeat with the 10K, which are all pull-up resistors for the different uh, inputs. And there's one other 10K, which is not a pull-up, but rather a pull-down for the reset line of the chip. It just confused me with the way they've got it drawn out there, but yeah, that's what it's doing. All right, with that in, what is the next things that are low-profile and not likely to get in the way of other stuff? Um, actually, how about that DC barrel jack? Because that's not going to be in the way of anything. And what else? Maybe ceramic capacitors. There's two of them goes there. This one over here is an electrolytic. I don't think it'll be in the way either. Um, and that one there. Yeah, let's do capacitors. So the two ceramic capacitors, these ones are in the crystal circuit. They are just for stabilization of the crystal. And then the two electrolytics uh, are power supply caps. One up here right near the power supply input and the other one in parallel with the um, the indicator diodes, the blue ones, not the laser diodes. As always, electrolytic capacitors are polarized components. You can see that the negative side is indicated by the stripe there. And on the board, the negative side has the little white band and the positive side has a positive sign, which is nice. These things being in parallel with the power are have a good chance of exploding if they're backwards and if there's an over voltage situation so we don't really want them to be backwards in a circuit that you won't care about if it's a circuit that you're just doing because you want to see the explosion well you do you if i'll grab the switches next because there's nothing really in the way of those now this one is a double pull, double throw latching kind of switch. Push on, push off. That is the power switch. And these two are just the momentary switches, which are probably used for mode selection, I would guess. And they're just going into the microcontroller, so they could be doing anything that the software wants them to do. But 
logically, I would think mode selection would probably be the uh, most likely thing that they're doing. Even though this is a double pull, double throw switch, only one side of it is being used. If I was laying out this board, I would probably put the two sides in parallel just to give me extra redundancy, just in case one set of contacts wears out or something, but this isn't really a highly critical circuit. However, on the push buttons, if you see, they did do that. Um, these two contacts are in parallel, these two contacts are in parallel, even though these are just single pole switches, they've used all of the contacts in parallel anyway, just for redundancy. Hmm. Starting to run into components that uh, fit my criteria of almost impossible to damage by improper handling. Uh, the 12 mig crystal is, well, I mean, you can, you can do shock damage to them if you, uh, if you abuse them too badly, like mechanical shock damage, I mean, because they are sort of an electromechanical components. So I'm going to put it in the board just slightly standing off so that when I trim the leads there is a little bit of spring from the uh, from the leads and also there's just a little bit of uh, space in there so that I don't actually overheat it. But I don't think I will. Those are fairly small pads and fairly small leads. So now for a little side quest. I think I'm going to make the little uh, light shields for the LDRs using the provided heat shrink. I'm cutting about a centimeter and a half length here. I don't know if that's right or not, but we'll experiment. I mean, I have lots of heat shrink, so if that's not right, then we can figure that out later. Let's put that over there and we'll see what happens. Try and hold that sort of parallel. Is that working? Is that shrinking down properly? I don't know. Well, that kind of works. And as long as there's a straight path down there, and there seems to be, then I think that will do the job. So I'll just repeat that a bunch of times, and then I'll solder these guys down. Maybe I don't need them a centimeter and a half, maybe only a centimeter. Regardless, I think they will work. Just Push these guys up tight to the board from the back side with my finger. Tack down one leg of each one and then carry on. Once I got one leg tacked down, just make sure that they're pretty much straight because we do need an optical path down into these guys. And then I'll take down the other lead and carry on with that too. I think when I cut these ones off, I'm going to cut them a little bit longer than I normally would just because I want to leave myself a bit of room for adjustment in case I need to adjust them in this orientation. This way I can do it easily, but if I need to adjust them the other way, I think I'm going to leave myself a little bit of slack, at least until I've got it calibrated from the other side. That, I think, is going to be the fiddliest thing, just getting all the optics lined up so that they can see each other. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Next, I, I should do the socket because it's impossible to damage it, but I think I want to do the diodes, the LEDs first, because otherwise it'll be hard for me to get at them with the socket in place. And I'll save the transistor until much later. So these are clearly blue LEDs, and as always, to identify the pins on them or the polarity on them because they are a polarized component. The longer lead is typically the positive side and you see around the base there's one flat side of the component that is the negative side. So on the board we have positive marked up at the uh, higher side of those ones so that's the longer lead that goes in this way. Sometimes the flat spot is located uh, in the silk screen. In this case it isn't so we'll just go with what the uh, what the markings say. If there weren't markings on the board, we could have also just uh, traced the schematic and figured out which side was which. In this case, this side goes to the uh, outputs of the microcontroller, and we can see here that that is the, the banded side or the negative side. Just like I did with the LDRs, 
I'm holding these guys in position from the other side with one finger just to make sure that they are straight, soldering one lead, verifying that they're straight on this side because sometimes they aren't, and then tagging the other lead down just to permanently hold it in place. And of course, repeat with all the other LEDs. All right, IC socket next and then transistor last. The socket has a notch indicated on the silk screen, which says that this end is a pin one end, which is that pin one down there. And the socket itself has the same notch, so I'll put those lined up to make it much easier later to remember which way this, the uh, chip goes. I think I'll throw a little bit of blue tack on there just to temporarily hold it. And then as I usually do, I'll just pick a corner pin and solder that in place. And then give it a push from the back side, refold that so that the uh, chip socket goes firmly down to the board. Pick the diagonally opposite corner, put some solder on there, and as you can see, I think, that end of the socket is actually folding up high. So I'll flip back to this side, put some pressure from the back, heat that up, refold it, burn my finger a little bit with pressure on there. And now the socket is solidly down and I can carry on putting the rest of the uh, solder on the rest of the pins. If I was actually soldering the chip itself directly to the board without a socket, I would be bouncing around uh, as I'm doing it to spread the heat around and not concentrate the heat in one spot. Just as an extra measure to prevent damage. But since this is just the socket, I don't need to worry about that. Last actual component on the board, we'll put the transistor in. And the transistor on the silk screen has a, uh, a shape, so you can be fairly confident which direction it goes. Now to deal with this one, which is where the lasers go. And they sit up here, just on these pillars. And let me just roughly position this one. Yeah, I think that is the alignment. That makes the most sense. But I do note that I'm probably going to have to adjust these guys a little bit. And I knew I would have to, just to make them center. But before we mount that up, I'm going to solder in all the LEDs. I know I've been calling these both LEDs and lasers, and technically they're both. They're a laser LED. Being an LED, it needs a current limiting resistor, and those are all pre-mounted on here. So this thing can just take straight 5 volts into the module, and it will create my little red dot. So just to test it, I've set my bench power supply to 5 volts, 20 milliamp current limit. Let's turn that on, and hopefully, as I said, hopefully the red one is positive, and the blue one is negative. Yeah, can you see that little red LED dot there? Perfect. So now we know how to solder them onto here. And I think I'm just going to do them one at a time. I'm not even going to trim back those leads. I'll leave it flying and ugly. I know some people are going to take offense at that. I'm not too concerned. This is my project. It's not often that I use the third hand for... Uh, for this kind of component holding, but now and again, it does come in handy for just this kind of a thing. There, and like I said, I'm just gonna have to use a little bit of hot glue on there eventually to goop it in place. But first, we'll get the rest of the LEDs in, lasers in. I don't know, what do you want me to call them? Laser LEDs? Well, I guess I could call them laser LEDs because that's really what they are. I don't know, I'm just getting lazy. You know what I'm talking about. You know, I think I'm not going to uh, hot glue these in place until I've got everything assembled and then I can sort of align everything. And I think I will also do that before I put the chip in because I want to do all the screwing around without the chip in place. So we've got a couple of red and black wires here, which I'm assuming are to jump between the two boards. They're long enough for that, and that's good. I guess before I do that, I will do a little bit of mechanical stuff. So I'm thinking that the reason 
that there are these short standoffs is that to create feet under the board just to give us a bit of clearance I'm gonna go with that anyway there's four of them there's two pillars and the pillars as I said are going to be for spacing this guy off means these screws and yeah I know I still have these wires to do but I think I want to have this in place before I do that I don't know I could come to regret that later but we will find out yeah I'm pretty sure that's what these short standoffs are for is feet as I said I could look at more pictures online I could translate that uh, that piece of paper that came with it but I like the puzzle of figuring this stuff out myself so that's what I'm doing and I think this is the last soldering on this kit unless I've screwed something up just getting these two power wires running up to the top there yeah I know I didn't need to wrap those wires around there but I kind of wanted to keep them out of this optical path so let's uh, power on I guess The hard part is holding this in place while it cools. So like I said, I really want it to be centered in that hole down into the uh, into the thing there. Okay, the answer seems to be put a little blob on both sides and then just I found a little piece of paper here it makes it easier to identify where the beam is if it's not quite centered and then as long as most of the light is dropping into the thing then we should be good and we can also adjust the bottom a little bit I think yeah I think that's going to work pretty well and then just don't monkey with that one skip down to the far end do this one and and while it's cooling go back to the other end again and after much fiddling about I've got pretty good laser light down into each one of those so I think it should work but when I said before that I was finished soldering I wasn't quite actually I still need to solder on the speaker and the speaker wires so I'll just quickly bash that out uh, the speaker wires go on to just there and there and uh, then after that I guess I should be able to put the chip in and see if this thing actually does what it's supposed to do so we'll put the chip in it is an STC microcontroller STC 89C 52RC for anybody who cares to look it up and the pins look like they're straight so we'll just carefully put all 40 of these pins in. I think I'm going to have to straighten them out just a little bit. Uh, they're a little bit splayed. They're all in line, but I need them a little bit further in. So respecting the notch for pin 1 at that end. Just get this guy in there. Come on. That side feels like it's in place. This side feels like it's roughly in place. I'll just quickly check it. Everything looks like it's lined up. Okay, and I screwed up. The rest of them are all in. That one pin is bent. Fortunately, I found in my old stuff the correct tool for the job. A chip puller. It just hooks under the ends and allows you to pull the chip straight out that's a severe mangulation I'm hoping that bending it back into shape doesn't uh, doesn't weaken the metal too much it's gonna make sure you, all these are nice and formed in and we'll try again mm. wish me luck 
yeah, I think I got it. Well, that was a little nerve-wracking. It's been a long time since I've put in a chip that size into anything. So let's turn it on. We got chase lights, okay. We got a mode there. I can sort of see that there is light into each one of these pipes. I'll just tweak them around slightly. Hey, that worked. Let me just block the light with something smaller than my finger so you can see what's going on. Ah, <laughs> that's cool. It's not the most speedy response. Now let's try, th okay, that is three different modes. First mode. It's got songs. Let's stop it again. What's happening down here? Okay. That's a different song. Oh, it's Happy Birthday. Okay. Oh, I hope that's not copyright protected. And the third mode. Okay. That's different. What does it do when it's lighting up two of these or changing this lighting around in response to what's going on up there? Huh. I wasn't really, I wasn't expecting songs. I was just expecting to do this. It's moderately responsive. Not not the fastest thing in the world for responding, but they all work. That's the important part. Well, again, something that I must be getting better with all this practice I've been getting in December because I didn't have to make any electronics changes on this. The only real mistake was slamming that chip in and bending the, the uh, pin on it. Other than that, I am pretty pleased with the outcome of this. And this December, with all these kit builds, has been fun. Um, but this is the last one for December, and I'm hoping that you enjoyed them all. Uh, questions and comments down below. I, I expect that I will be doing this again next year in December. It was fun. It's a good way to end off the year. Um, yeah, uh, let's, let's hear from you down below. What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, what do you hope to see in the next year? No promises, but uh, you never know. Thanks for watching this and all year. I really do appreciate that. Um, and I will talk to you next week with some other project or something. I don't even know what I'm doing next week, honestly. But it'll be a surprise to everybody. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.